Hello everyone, uh, this is Ivan. I am glad to see you again. And today let's talk about airplane trajectory data processing uh, within uh, MATLAB tool. Uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce a little bit uh, about uh, trajectory data processing problem. As you know that uh, each aircraft is uh, flown by specific predefined trajectory in airspace. Usually, uh, this trajectory is defined uh, by uh, coordinates of uh, aircraft uh, location. And these coordinates usually uh, represent, uh, are represented for us in uh, the latitude, longitude and altitude mode. Uh, also, today is uh, quite available for everyone uh, some databases uh, which provide us uh, access to the real-time flight tracking. Uh, all of these technologies are grounded on uh, automatic dependent surveillance broadcast concept, which uh, use uh, transmitted messages from uh, onboard equipment of each airspace user within particular airspace. And uh, this position report usually uh, includes uh, latitude and longitude measured by uh, global navigation satellite system on board of airplane and barometrical altitude. Uh, this is also quite important to understand that we do not have in ADSB data uh, altitude measured by GNSS. Uh, this is due to specific settings of, uh, uh, of onboard uh, transponder of uh, 1090 extended screeter. Uh, however, barometrical altitude uh, is obligatory for uh, data message because barometrical altitude uh, is used for ATC purposes. That's why for identification everyone in the airspace, uh, everyone should to transmit at least barometrical altitude and uh, latitude and longitude of location in horizontal space. In this case, we've got uh, horizontal coordinates and uh, altitude above mean sea level. Uh, let me show you uh, few probably uh, companies which provide us access to their uh, ADSB data tra tracking in real time. First of all, I would like to sh uh, show you Flight Radar 24. Okay, and uh, Just a second, I will need uh, a few time to update uh, information and uh, here we can see Ukrainian airspace and all the traffic uh, above Ukrainian airspace. Thus we can uh, click on different uh, airplanes and uh, see uh, coordinates of uh, each airspace user location. That's why if I uh, like click somewhere, I will get uh, tracked data of particular aircraft and uh, I can uh, use this data for any other data processing. For example, if I select for example this one, we will see that it is a flight from uh, Kharkiv to Tallinn with uh, uh, predefined pre trajectory and we've got uh, a track log of this uh, flight. Uh, there are all airspace user and we just can click and get any data that we need. Okay. There are many of different uh, airplanes and we can easily obtain data about uh, each of airspace user. 
However, uh, Flight Radar 24 uh, it is uh, mostly prepaid service, and if you would like to play with this data, uh, we need uh, to get uh, permission to do that, and we need to like uh, prepay some money and uh, use prepaid fan service for getting access to that. Uh, another quite often uh, used uh, provider of air of air traffic data it is uh, AirNav. Just a second, if I remember, AirNav. Uh, a enough uh, radar box which has a uh, radar box uh, description and in this case uh, we can also get access for real traffic data and uh, also we can select a particular ADSB receiver location and select uh, an, airplane, an air traffic within uh, this particular ground station. And, it, uh, and uh, how you can see that uh, typical ADSB receiver can cover uh, quite long territories, up to uh, 500 uh, nautical miles. However, it depends on uh, geometry of location in the space and many other things. Uh, AirNav Radar Box also has uh, global coverage and is based under their uh, separate ground stations, private ground stations located over the globe. And uh, basically also we cannot uh, use this data if you would like to process it in uh, MATLAB. Uh, okay, next, uh, quite valuable uh, resource, it is Flight Aware. Flight Aware com. This resource, uh, okay, for the, uh, uh, I will close all the resources that we do not need. And if we uh, open Flight Aware, we will see also the same real air traffic. Then we can click on some of them and we, we will have information about uh, departure and destinations, airports and all the data between uh, related to this uh, aircraft. Even more, we can uh, download flight log and play with flight log a little bit. However, uh, in our data processing, I don't want to take a quite uh, long airplane trajectory like this one from uh, Azure. Just a second. This flight is uh, 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 quite from, from Varadero, Cuba to Borispil, Ukraine. Airport. Uh, I don't want to take uh, so long flight due to crossing different uh, different uh, like different axes of uh, latitude and longitude coordinate system. Because usually when we've got crossing flight from east to west or from uh, North to source, latitude and longitude. Probably in some formulas we may have some difficulties. That's why uh, actually now I would like to show you the basic that we can do with the trajectory because I don't want to spend too much time. However, it's up to you. You can play with uh, different trajectories and then just specify a uh, minus sign somewhere or somewhere just delete uh, 
minus sign in a coordinates to get exactly uh, location. That's why uh, crossing different uh, zones requires uh, changes or improvement of our basic code in MATLAB. That's why uh, I would like to choose quite short uh, connection, which will be a, a Ukrainian international airline, and it will be 56 I call. Uh, let me check. I do not remember. Oh no, 50, uh, 54. Uh, Ukrainian International Airlines 54. Uh, 54th uh, uh, flight of Ukrainian International Airlines. It is flight connection between Odessa, Ukrainian Airport, and Kyiv, Borisko International Airport within the Ukraine. Also, as you can see, that flight time is approximately 40 minutes and trajectory is uh, quite uh, uh, short, like this one. However, during the uh, flight, uh, this time uh, is enough to get enrolled mode and then uh, descent and landing mode. That's why we'll have uh, all phases of flight in uh, this example of data. That's why we will play with this uh, data. I think it will be good uh, for practice. Okay, uh, and let's start. If we scroll a little bit down, we will see uh, upcoming flights. However, for these flights, we do not have any data, and we see all the past flights. And today is Saturday, and uh, we see that uh, our departure and arrival was uh, at uh, approximately 7 a.m., and airplane is uh, land at 8 a.m. And uh, flight uh, was performed by aircraft Boeing 738, and duration was uh, one hour approximately. And uh, today uh, we will use this flight trajectory for precise uh, data processing. And first of all, what we need, we just need to click uh, View Track Block. Just a second. And we will get uh, a table with a specified time of measurements, then uh, latitude data longitude, then uh, heading angle, uh, airspeed in knots, airspeed in miles per hour, and altitude in feet. Uh, vertical speed and vertical trend. However, we uh, will not use it. Therefore, first of all, uh, let's uh, try to grab this data uh, to MATLAB environment. I have already uh, opened MATLAB and I've got clear workspace and I've got an uh, empty current folder that is ready, ready for our input data. Therefore, first of all, let's uh, grab this data. Uh, to do that, I just uh, copied there are different ways how we can get this data and how we can transfer it to the MATLAB environment. I will use the most easiest one. Therefore, I just select the table, then uh, go to the MATLAB, then go to all workspace, click on workspace, and then uh, uh, click paste or just Ctrl V. And uh, when we do it, we will initiate automatic, uh, like we will initiate automatic uh, data importing from Wizard, and uh, we just need to wait when uh, import Wizard will be initiated. Okay.
where it is. Okay, uh, I already got it uh, in different screen. That's why uh, all the data that we cut, uh, we wrote in something like that. Okay, you will see. Uh, okay, as you can see uh, in this data, uh, we've got everything. It's great. That's why MATLAB recognizes that we copy structured table, and what we just need, we need to specify which data we've got in uh, this copied data. That's why, first of all, I will I can click on this. Uh, column like identification title and I can change. That's why I would like to change uh, title of first column to the time t, let it be t. That's why I just click t and that's all. Uh, the second column is latitude. Therefore, I will change it to A, capital case and lock, which means aircraft latitude and click enter. The next column I will change for aircraft longitude and click enter. Uh, hidden angle I, I don't want because uh, we can count it and uh, it's uh, maybe not important data uh, for today. Then, knots. If you would like, we can extract it. However, we always can calculate it and I, I will be glad if we uh, calculate this data, uh, vertical uh, speed of uh, airplane. That's why I just uh, left this data as we've got it. However, we need aircraft altitude. That's why I select column with aircraft altitude and I change it to aircraft out, which means aircraft altitude. Okay, and uh, next uh, we just need to specify data format that uh, will be used uh, for uh, our data uh, matrices. If we uh, use latitude, longitude and altitude, everything is quite clear because uh, we already got uh, this data as, as double, as integer. However, if we consider our time, you will see specific data format. And by default, MATLAB uh, specify text or string uh, uh, type of this data. That's why we just need to change uh, this type of data to specific data time format. Because later, much more better will be to use uh, data time uh, for plotting our like final data. That's why I will specify data time. Uh, however, in this list I do not have uh, required data time format. Uh, then I just can uh, specify uh, a custom data time. If you would like, you can uh, Google a little bit and uh, just a second. Wait is oh. Okay, and uh, we can uh, use uh, MATLAB uh, data time data time function. And if you run search, uh, we will go to the data time description. Okay, and uh, here we've got format. Uh, not just a second, give me a second, maybe this format. Yeah, and here we've got a uh, specification of uh, different letter identifiers which we can use to, uh, like, ex our data time expression reading. And uh, just if we can compare what we've got here with uh, our it is okay. Import result. You will see that first of all, it is a day of the week, uh, which will be a triple E Wednesday. Here as an example, 
that's why in our just a second one data formats and then if we scroll down enter custom data format here uh, then you will see we need to specify triple e which means uh, day of the week then we need to specify uh, hours then semicolon then uh, minutes then semicolon then seconds then space and a m o p n in matlab it is just a okay you will see that pm here is uh, uh, a and uh, after the entering this format we just need to click enter and uh, you will see that uh, okay if you can click on the whole column you will see that this column is blue and if it is blue it means that uh, reading of this formula has been done uh, accurately without any problems and then we can easy we can easily extract this data uh, next we need to select which column i would like to uh, import to uh, my workspace that's why i just specified uh, four columns time of measurements latitude longitude and altitude and then clicking import after clicking import then we can go to the matlab and go to uh, workspace and you will see that we've got uh, four variables which we uh, currently uh, import in our wizard a uh, altitude a uh, latitude a uh, longitude and time of measurement in data time data format next uh, before we will do any other other operations uh, i uh, i would like to suggest you just to save this workspace uh, for further uh, implementation uh, and for further usage that's why uh, we can do it also in many different ways however i like more coding therefore i just click uh, i just call function save and then uh, specify uh, identification of aircraft roi 54 and today is uh, february uh, 12 uh, 2022 uh, and if I click enter in my current folder uh, will be created new data file okay which called AUE54 February 2 uh, 2022.mat and this file next I will use to uh, read uh, my data in MATLAB directly and then run in my code. Okay, let's continue. Then I can close just this wizard uh, and uh, I will uh, open where it is uh, my script. Uh, I've got prepared three lines of description of this script. Let it be airplane trajectory processor uh, with Ivan Astrumov. It's me, hello, and current day February 12, 2022. And as usual, we will start from uh, three basic lines. It will be CLC and uh, clear wars and close all. I like plotting uh, many graphs. That's why close all you really helpful here. And uh, before we'll do uh, anything else, first of all, let's load our data from mat file of MATLAB. Uh, to do that, we just need to call load function. You see that it is quite easy. And then paste a title of file we just saved in uh, our um, working bars of MATLAB. However, we just need to specify extension, which will be MATLAB. And next, if you run our script, after the cleaning all the variables, in our MATLAB environment, we also got uh, these variables. That's why 
In this case, we just like frozen these variables in our workspace for all further data processing. Next, uh, we need uh, to do uh, two uh, quite important uh, steps. First of all, in my uh, data, which we just uh, grab, wait just a second, altitude was in feet. However, I like meters. That's why uh, I will be glad if you transform uh, altitude uh, from feet to meter. That's why I, I just create new variable HM will be height in meters, uh, which will be uh, aircraft altitude multiplied with uh, approximately 0 .30, uh, 48. And in this case, it will be approximately uh, our altitude in meters. Then, uh, also quite important, uh, I would like to count uh, time of each measurement which we have in ADSB data from uh, first uh, measurement. And uh, to do that, uh, I will uh, use loop uh, and in which loop variable will change each uh, time that we have. Therefore, I will be changed from 1 to numeral uh, R latitude. If you use 4, it means that we need to type AND. And uh, here I will specify maybe T2, because T we already have, and T2 it will be 1. And here we use uh, function which called e time and function e time count uh, time difference between two data uh, data vectors however it does not operate it does not work with a uh, timestamp that's why we will we will need to transform from uh, data time to data vector and then we apply e time for uh, finding the, the difference between two uh, data vectors. And uh, next, uh, that's why we need to specify uh, data uh, vector function. And here we will use time. And uh, the next uh, function, uh, it will be also data vector of uh, first time t1. In this case, uh, e time will found as difference between first time in our sequence with all other times in uh, our matrix. Let's run and let's see uh, what we will have. Just a second. Okay, and I'm interested in uh, T2. If I click, you will see that E2, it will be time in seconds between first and all other uh, cells of current time. Therefore, uh, at the first location, we've got the just zero because we uh, make uh, minus from first uh, to the second one. That's why here we've got zero, 17, 33, 49, 66, and so on. And uh, sometimes you will see that time is not synchronized because difference in time uh, may be different and it, it is due to uh, some errors influence during the uh, transmitting uh, position report via ADSB data uh, channel. Next, uh, before we will start uh, data processing, we need to prepare this data. Because as you can see here, uh, we've got in first second, then in 17 seconds ago, later. Then in also approximately in 17 seconds too. That's why we don't know what's going on with, during the 16 seconds. And to count uh, missing data, we will apply interpolation. 
In math, we've got quite uh, oftenly used uh, specific algorithms for data interpolation. It means recover missing data in some data sets. And to do that, first of all, we need to specify uh, matrix of um, time for which we would like to interpolate our data. And uh, let it be from uh, zero seconds, because it will be like start of flight uh, with a step of one up to the final time of flight. And uh, I specify end. And in this case, we will get uh, interpolation for each second of our flight. And then let's try to do this interpolation for each uh, variable separately. Airplane latitude, I, I just add two, which means like interpolate data. And I will use uh, function interp uh, one interpolation. And uh, we need to specify timestamp, which we already had, and data, which we uh, will interpolate. Then uh, we specify new timestamp, T3, and then specify uh, a method which we use for interpolation. And of course, uh, spline gives us the best uh, fitting results. The same let's uh, do for longitude. It will be longitude 2, and I will use inter uh, 1 as well. And here I will specify t2, comma, uh, longitude, comma, t3, uh, comma, line. And uh, do it one more time for altitude. Uh, altitude. Two will be equal in terp uh, one, and here is t two uh, altitude uh, t three, and also a uh, line. Okay, probably I just add space here and uh, maybe space here and. It looks great, and maybe space here as well. Oh, okay. And uh, when we run, okay, uh, let's check what we have. You will see that we've got our, our latitude, our longitude, uh, one and two, and our altitude, and also T three holds approximately 2006 elements. That's why we uh, increased uh, number of data points uh, quite valuable. Next, uh, let's plot uh, data uh, that we have uh, for visualization. Uh, first of all, let's plot like in latitude and longitude in some uh, time of conical projection for latitude and longitude. That's why let's create figure. That's why figure. Then if you know I like to specify color, uh, it will be white. Then I will specify a property. Oh, sorry, a property name uh, with a title, a trajectory, Trajectory of uh, AOE 54, uh, and also I will specify just the second. Uh, I have identifiers of airports. In my case, it is UK OO dash UKBB and uh, February. 22. Oh, 12. 12th of February. Then, uh, due to usage of uh, conical projection, we need to specify limits for visualization. Therefore, I will create labeling matrix will include uh, minimum 
minimum and maximum uh, minimum and maximum values for uh, periods of latitude visualization and uh, minimum value for our uh, latitude uh, and maximum value for our latitude. Uh, also the same I will do for longitude. Long lean will be minimum value for aircraft longitude and for maximum value for aircraft longitude. However, in most cases, uh, if it using something like that, uh, our visualization trajectory may be not good. That's why let's add some probably variable uh, peril P, which will be equal one degree. And uh, for minimum value, I just minus P. Uh, and for maximum value, I just add P. And uh, this peril value will like make our visualization a little bit wider than we we got uh, it as usual. Then I will specify a uh, function USR map, which will create for us conical projection visualization, and just uh, specify here, specify here uh, lat lean and uh, long lean. And then we are ready for plotting our data. And to do that, uh, I will use function here show from mapping toolbox. And here I will specify our aircraft latitude, aircraft longitude, and uh, color properties for, uh, for this data. And let it be just red. And uh, also I will specify marker. Marker uh, will be uh, R. Then also I will add property marker size. Marker size, uh, which will be uh, let it be two because by default one. That's why we just make it a little bit uh, bigger. And also I will specify marker uh, sorry, marker uh, age color as a red uh, as well okay uh, next also I would like to specify uh, interpolated trajectory also by uh, your show function and I will specify our latitude 2, uh, our longitude 2. Uh, however, I will use uh, blue color. Color at uh, blue. And in this case, we can understand uh, what it is. Next, uh, let's add identification of airports. To do that, also use geo show function and then specify our latitude. However, in this case, we will use uh, a matrix entering and uh, we will specify only. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, it's okay. First, comma, and final point of our trajectory. Also, I will copy and uh, do the same for longitude longitude yeah uh, then uh, we specify also all the properties that we've got before therefore i just copied and uh, change uh, description let uh, color will be green uh, marker will be square and market size uh, should be a little bit bo uh, bigger than marker uh, age color. Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. Marker age color. Let it be green as well. 
screen. And uh, also let uh, add text data, therefore identification of reports. In this case, we will use function text m. And I will use uh, the same coordinates with the centers of airports. However, I will add uh, approximately half degree for uh, longitude value. And then uh, we can uh, feel free to add identifiers of airport as a uh, string array. You pay me. Yeah, it's uh, already done. Then let's also specify color. Uh, it let it be color. Okay, just a second. I will change location. I will do something like that. Okay, color. And color, let it be black. Okay, black. Uh, then let specify a uh, font size property because uh, font size because we would like to make it visible in our scale. Let it be nice, uh, and also we can specify horizontal horizontal alignment. and uh, let it be center. Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, try to run our code uh, to see if we code everything correctly. Uh, we've got, uh, we do not have any mistakes. However, when we run, probably some data can be uh, entering not in proper format. Therefore, let's check. Uh, okay, and as I can see, uh, we've got everything correctly, and we've got our trajectory. However, we do not have uh, identification of uh, of our textual data. That's why probably we've got mistake in text M. Uh, let me check. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, we've got uh, horizontal. Okay, uh, horizon. I miss all. Horizontal alignment. And also, uh, based on picture that we have, you can see that we've got green line. It is like a direct connection. I do not want uh, to, to plot it. Uh, therefore, I just can uh, add probably here a uh, display, display mode, and I will specify uh, point. Uh, let uh, me run again, and uh, we will see uh, that actually now everything is great. We've got our textual data, and this textual data is not located uh, exactly uh, where we would like. And quite important that we've got. Uh, star line, red line, it is our trajectory. Uh, however, blue line, it is the result of our interpolation. However, we will see it a little bit later when we plot some uh, Cartesian uh, graphics. Okay, uh, next, uh, let's make a 3D plot because uh, I know that some of yours like 3D plot. Okay, uh, I just probably add title because everything should be uh, should be perfect. Therefore, I just add title. Okay, and we can go next. Next, uh, let's use uh, plot three function 
to plot trajectory in uh, like Cartesian reference frame. Therefore, I will copy a figure as we've got, and I just add plot three function, and I specify uh, r uh, latitude, r longitude, and uh, height in meter. Uh, and uh, also we will use a star with the red color. Then uh, I will add uh, interpolated data, thus I will use called on. Then I just copy this data, then put it here, and number two at the title of each variable. However, in this case, it will be solid blue line. And finally, we need to hold off. I'll shut down our holding of figure. And uh, next, we can specify text data. To do that, I just uh, like copy text m function, uh, then uh, put, in, put it uh, here, just change text. A latitude, okay, and all other. Probably we can still, as we got it here. Okay, and uh, next, uh, let specify. Uh, okay, uh, identification of final airports. Uh, plot three a latitude, a longitude, and, and HM. HM, and also use first and final point of HM. And then uh, I will specify a color. Okay, I don't want to use color. Okay. Probably I specify uh, in plot 3 uh, just square blue and uh, marker size properties. Uh, okay, then it will be enough. Then uh, let me uh, also specify. Okay, X label and Y label. Therefore, close all of that and add uh, X label, label title, which will be, uh, in my case, latitude uh, in uh, degrees. Latitude in degrees. Then a Y label it will be longitude. also in degrees uh, and uh, that label label of this plot it will be altitude that label yep it will be uh, altitude okay maybe i will just specify age and here specify mean sea level msl and it will be in meters and uh, to make it more uh, usual for visualization, let add grid on property. Okay, and when we run it, uh, this time, okay, just a second, probably uh, I've got, uh, yeah, I, I forget. Let me re-simulate it one more time. Probably we will got eight plus three. H M two. H M two. Oh, 
Repository Out Out to Okay, let me re-simulate one more time You will see that I've got many mistakes That's why uh, I just need to uh, to try to figure out all of these mistakes to get correct uh, visualization. Okay, and our altitude. Uh, okay, probably here HM in meters. That's why I need to convert our altitude to meters as well. So I'll multiply with uh, 0, 40, 48. Uh, let me re-simulate one more time. And in this case, I'm glad because I got everything that I would like <laughs> uh, until uh, I do not have identification of airport. That's why uh, in text probably I got mistake a lot alone. And yeah, I need to specify. Uh, Altitude, uh, just a second. Okay, and comma. Let me simulate it. Okay, also I've got mistake. So I don't have mistake anymore. Uh, just a second, I will simulate it. Okay, why you can be here? Oh yeah, we probably do we cannot use your plus H M text M on okay. You can have a UK O O and UK D B. Latitude, longitude, and uh, altitude, HM. Oh, no, HM, HM, and HM. Okay, let's run it again. Okay, and I've got that, uh, that I would like to show you. We've got three-dimensional trajectory of this particular aircraft. However, in the latitude and longitude. Therefore, we can a little bit uh, scroll it uh, to see how it looks like in three dimensional. And you can see that it is not like just uh, uh, real uh, line, because it has some like changes in the geometry of line. And uh, let's go next. Uh, then uh, I would like to plot uh, a few more graphs. Uh, next, uh, let uh, me plot vertical profile of this trajectory. Therefore, I just copy also copy figure options. However, it will be not trajectory, however, vertical uh, profile of uh, this particular flight. And uh, I will use plot function just to specify a T2 height uh, in meters so for HM. Then uh, I would like to specify color, red one, and uh, interpolated data, T3 from H2 and uh, let it be just solid blue line. Uh, then uh, let's introduce legend. 
And here we will specify like uh, ADSB data data. Uh, next one, it will be interpolated data. Interpolated uh, data. Uh, then let's add a X label, X, uh, label uh, which will be uh, time in seconds. Then uh, let's add Y label, which will be uh, parametrical altitude. Each, uh, okay, however, we use M M MSL, mean sea level. Altitude uh, also available in meters. And uh, then let's add title. title of current uh, figure, which will be the same with the title of figure. Okay, then let read on. And I'm happy. And let's simulate it. And, uh, okay, I got a mistake. H2. Oh, H2. Okay, I don't have H2 because I got AVA2. So in this case, I just uh, use this one. So enter. Let's run it again. H2, I don't have H2. Oh, yes, everything is correct and we can see our trajectory. That's why here we've got vertical profile. It means altitude of the airplane. And on this uh, graph, we can zoom and we can see that uh, how we interpolate our data. The, the red one it is actual ADSB data and the blue line is interpolated data. That's why we use interpolation by splines to predict aircraft location between our measurements. Uh, Watching uh, on the on that, I see that I don't like this one. That's why I would like to size x uh, axis to get precisely data along the whole x axis. Therefore, uh, I will I just add uh, x lean somewhere function with a specification uh, uh, zero or minimum value of T2 and uh, maximum value of uh, T2. And then if I run it, you will see that uh, my picture will be uh, scaled based on X scale to get the whole uh, graph along the X curve. X scale. Uh, next, uh, let do some trajectory data analysis because before all all of these graphs that we have, it's only representation of trajectory data that we just get uh, from flight aware website. Actually, now I would like uh, to count with you. Uh, ground speed of airplane and vertical speed. These two parameters are probably uh, important for air traffic management and we can count it based on available uh, trajectory data. That's why uh, to do that uh, I just uh, probably scroll a little bit of my uh, screen. I will create a new section which will be called trajectory uh, data processing. And uh, first of all, let uh, me transform our coordinates from latitude, longitude, and altitude to some Cartesian reference frame ECL. That's what I will use x variable and apply function LLR to ECL. And then just uh, use uh, matrix of aircraft latitude, 
AU craft longitude and AU craft altitude that we've got from the initial part. Then, uh, after applying this function, just a second, I will re-simulate it. I will need to re-simulate. Okay, sorry. I left LLR2 ECF. If we run it, uh, okay. you will see that we've got X matrix. And X matrix includes three, co three columns. First column, it is X which is direct x axis which is directed uh, according to ECF uh, from the center of our planet to the point of crossing uh, prime meridian and equator. That axis, it is a third column, uh, is directed from the center of our planet uh, along the rotation axis of our planet. And why add axis just add Cartesian reference frame? And here we've got distances from the center of our planet in meters. That's why we switch from uh, latitude longitude to the x, y, and z axis. That help us to count the distance between each of these points, because each line here specifies uh, each point of aircraft trajectory, trajectory from the reference frame of our Earth related to the center mass of our planet. Uh, next, uh, we need to count the range between uh, each point and previous point of our trajectory. Therefore, I will create variable range, uh, which will be equal uh, SQLT, I will use, and then I will specify a difference by core, uh, sum of power difference between coordinates. Therefore, I will use power uh, of second order, and here I will specify uh, Probably also in brackets, I will specify x from first to end minus one, minus one, and comma, uh, comma one, comma one, minus x from two to end comma one. Yeah, yeah, this is the place that I would like to see. Okay, next, I just copy this power. Okay, Control C, and then uh, make plus Control V. And here I will change only. Okay, okay, just a second. Here's the mistake. Uh, here's too much brackets. It should be, uh, it should be here. Yeah. And uh, then I I will copy power uh, second time and just uh, change uh, first column to the second column, which will be related to the y, and then add third time and just change it to the third column and uh, of course next I would like to simulate it to see if I've got range yep I've got and we see range in meters between each point of uh, our trajectory and this is exactly range with the precise uh, with the precise data uh, and accuracy of GPS, if you know quite uh, well, up to 10 meters. That's why uh, this trajectory we got quite precisely. Next, uh, let's uh, count uh, time difference between two points because 
in time vector t, we've got uh, our time is delta time. In t2, we've got uh, time between seconds. And actually now I would like to uh, find difference between one time and the previous time. And this vector, it will be time between uh, two points. Time to fly between two, two of these points. And to count uh, that, we will uh, introduce variable 3 triple t, and which include t2 with 2, 1, step, and uh, minus uh, t2, 1, step, 1, uh, and minus 1. Yeah. And uh, then we can easily find velocity, ground, ground speed of aircraft, which will be range uh, divided uh, by triple T. Uh, oh, just a second. Uh, which range we've got? Range uh, 95, 1. And T2 is 1, uh, 96. Okay, let me think a little bit. That's why range 96 and T2 90. Okay, range 95 and uh, T2 96. Okay, let's re-simulate it to see uh, uh, what the size of uh, triple T. Triple T is 90, uh, 95. Yep, and uh, probably we've got a mistake because triple two is one ninety five and range ninety five one. That's why we, we just need to apply some transformation somewhere. And uh, if we resimulate everything okay uh, or again, we will get probably correct data for our velocity. Okay, and we've got our velocity in meters per second. Uh, and uh, let's plot it, uh, and we can do it quite uh, speedy. That's why I just need to copy this figure properties, uh, and then just add ground speed, ground uh, speed uh, of. Okay. Next, I can use t uh, two. Okay. Just a second. Uh, I can use yeah t uh, two variable. However, I will use from second to end because uh, I will I've got t two uh, in one more because we've got first value. Uh, however, in our velocity, we do not have first value because first value will be equal to zero. Uh, or we can specify that velocity at first time is equal to zero. However, I would like to cut uh, this one. That's why uh, I just uh, miss this data. Uh, that's why I just cut first value in matrix t2. And uh, I would like to use stairs instead of plot because uh, stairs uh, show us like uh, stairs or process of Time changing. Uh, okay, uh, then X lim uh, I would like uh, to steal here. X label time. Uh, y label it will be velocity. Uh, it will be ground speed. Uh, however, it will be uh, ground speed. Uh, okay, uh, maybe it will be ground. Ground. Uh, in meters per second. And uh, for title, uh, I will copy the same that we have. Uh, and grid on is already had. Let uh, me resimulate my part of code. And uh, what we have. Just a second, hopefully, we've got some mistake. Uh, stay if. Sorry, uh, sorry for mistake. Uh, 
Oh, this is mostly typos. And uh, we've got uh, our ground speed for this aircraft. And we can see that ground speed is quite fluctuated, therefore, at the initial time, aircraft uh, should to increase uh, speed. However, then during the en route phase, speed uh, was stable approximately 200 meters per second. And then uh, aircraft uh, began landing. Therefore, they just planing or like gliding, and uh, speed they just uh, have been, uh, and speed uh, has been reduced uh, up to their landing. And uh, near their touchdown, uh, speed was increased a little bit. Okay, next, let's count uh, vertical speed. And uh, vertical speed uh, we can also find uh, quite uh, easily by changing uh, altitude. Thus, I just uh, use HM for altitude uh, that we have. And I will specify that uh, we will count from each uh, Next element, we will count, we will minus the previous element. One point and yep, uh, and minus one, yep, exactly. Uh, and then we transpon need to transponate it and divide it uh, by two, triple T. Okay, and also we need to put a dot here because uh, the size of matrix in the same case with the range can give us uh, exactly what we need. And then we can plot uh, what we have uh, in uh, our AO. However, it will be vertical speed. Vertical speed of this particular aircraft. It will be vertical speed and it will be uh, vertical, vertical as well, also in meters per second. Uh, however, we need to change T2 uh, to H vertical. Uh, okay, uh, oh sorry, uh, okay, T2 is, needs to uh, steal, however, we need to change H vertical here. And if we run it again, we've got vertical speed distribution, and we have seen that before at the uh, takeoff phase, we've got vertical speed approximately up to the 10 meters per second, and then it was an road part when speed was constant. However, next uh, vertical speed uh, goes down, and we've got like up to minus 10 meters per second vertical speed and then it was reduced because uh, we flow by the glide flow which has a predefined trajectory and uh, probably that's all with graph building however i would like also count total length of our trajectory and count total flight of our data that we have. And to do that, <coughs> we will use display function, which will uh, uh, show the data in the command window. However, uh, to do that, we need to prepare a string array. And to do that, we create a string cut function, and then we create like a string array, which includes uh, description, which means total range uh, uh, of uh, AOE uh, flight uh, of uh, AOE 54 uh, flight is uh, total range of the flight trajectory trajectory is and I will add semicolon and then I will specify a uh, total range. However, also we will need to transform it from numbers to string. 
the command to string function I will use and here I, I will be sum of elements in matrix range however uh, let it be in kilometers that's why I just divide it by 1000 and uh, next uh, I need I would like to specify that it will be in kilometers therefore just in kilometers uh, and uh, if we run it okay we will see that total range of our flight trajectory is 40 uh, 442 kilometers approximately uh, let uh, do the same however for time total time of uh, our flight is However, in this case, uh, we need to use, uh, okay, I, I just clear all of that. Uh, another function, date to string, and in this case, you need to find different between times. And function did uh, found difference between two time uh, values. And here we need to specify t. Uh, and we need to specify matrix of times which we would like to minus and it will be second time and uh, final time and, and uh, let it be run and we will see that okay, okay we see uh, 12.44 am okay, I see, we need to specify output format for all of this data and to specify it, just adding comma and plotting, uh, let it be in hours, okay, sorry, uh, minutes and seconds. Uh, let it be simulated and now, okay, sorry, I don't like it. We will see that we've got zero hours, uh, 44 minutes and 40 seconds. And probably here, uh, let it be dash. And uh, now let it be simulated all of that again, waiting for some time. And uh, I've got all the graphs, uh, which I would like to share with you just a second. Give me a second to prepare visualization of what we've got. That's why maybe here I will locate uh, total trajectory of uh, our air connection that we talk about. Okay, that's why from uh, UK OO, Odessa International Airport to the UKBB, Boristo International Airport. Then uh, we've got trajectory in 3D, which is looks uh, like this one. Then we've got vertical profile of our uh, trajectory, uh, measured trajectory and interpolated with the spline functions. Then we've got ground speed distribution over the whole flight and we've got vertical speed of aircraft during the whole flight. And uh, also next we can see uh, okay, where it is MATLAB. Oh, MATLAB, where is it? Okay, we've got total length 44 kilom kilometers, 442 kilometers, and uh, flight time 44 minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, probably that's all that uh, I would like to share with you. Uh, actually, today we discuss uh, discuss the, the main uh, ideas how we can grab uh, the data from uh, different databases and how we can use it in MATLAB. Uh, here we discuss only visualization. Okay, of course we count vertical speed and ground speed. Uh, however, this is just visualization process. Next, we can apply different algorithms, for example, uh, for trajectory fitting. 
uh, we can use alpha beta filter, we can use alpha beta gamma filter for errors filtering, or even we can use uh, some Kalman filter to make more precisely fitting. Also quite important that uh, usually all of these databases includes ADSB data. And uh, ADSB data uses uh, GNSS measured coordinates of aircraft. And it means that these coordinates may be very precise. And it means that even uh, air navigation service provider can use this data uh, to tune, uh, for example, radars or to tune other uh, air navigation facilities because this data is quite uh, quite accurate nowadays. However, we don't know accuracy of this data because we don't know what accuracy of uh, GNSS receiver on board of airplane. This uh, data is available only uh, for airline. That's why we cannot uh, uh, we cannot talk that uh, uh, this data has particular precise, uh, particular accuracy. Uh, however, yeah, uh, we can see that this accuracy quite, uh, quite uh, valuable for modern uh, navigation equipment. Okay, uh, that's all for today. Uh, uh, I'm glad that uh, you've been uh, with me and uh, you have uh, listened all of that. That's why thank you very much. Uh, if you will have any questions, I will be glad to answer. Therefore, please uh, uh, don't be shy. You always can uh, type 